Hi, 7th grade. Uh, welcome back. Um, we've been focusing on the development of feudalism. Uh, this is UCLA's exit ticket score. And it's looking, you know, uh, kind of all over the place. There were four students that got a 10. There were six students that got a 9. There were five students that got an 8 and so forth. My concern is these students, uh, because this might be happening for a number of reasons, Either you're not understanding what I'm what I'm explaining or you're not watching the videos and looking at the resources. So please make sure to take this seriously. You will be having a quiz on this probably on uh, Monday or Tuesday. So please let me know. OK, uh, we're going to go over this exit ticket. So the first question said or this I actually moved it. But the question said in the feudal system, what did the nobles gain from the relationship to the king? The nobles gain land, also known as a fief or a fife. Uh, after the fall of Rome, Western Europe was divided into many independent kingdoms. This question was given to you before. Uh, Europe was divided into many Germanic kingdoms. Okay. According to this image, who is at the bottom of the feudal system? Uh, this image is talking about this, uh, about this image. Who's at the bottom of the feudal system? It is the, the peasants. The king is at the top, then the nobles, then the knights, and then finally the peasants. Okay. So if you picked um, King Feudal, like kings are never at the bottom. It's always going to be the peasants. Peasants are farmers. Uh, what was feudalism? We'll talk about it more today. It is a political system um, where people exchange land in return for loyalty. Okay. Uh, I can see how you might think it's a trade agreement. It's not really trading, right? I guess they trade um, loyalty in return for land. But in this case, it's a political and military system. According to the chart, uh, this is the document. The nobles gave land to two people set themselves. I don't know how that's possible. Um, right? They don't give the land to the king. I think the, the, the confusion here was protection, right? But nobles actually um, gave land to their vassals. Vassals are people that serve the nobles. Uh, people that uh, uh, swear their loyalty or allegiance to the noble. Uh, it can be a knight or it can be another noble. In the feudal system, wealth was based on how much land you had. No land, that means you're poor, like the peasants. Feudalism was developed to uh, bring stability and protection to Europe. Not to unite the empire into one, under one, or not to unite the, the continent under one person, uh, because there are many kingdoms. Why did the kings find it necessary to find uh, vassals, to have vassals? Because they could not rule their kingdom themselves. They needed help from the, from the, from the nobles. Uh, what did peasants get out of this system? They got food and protection and land to farm. Which of the following issues were facing Rome or Europe in the 700s? Uh, invasions by Muslims and Vikings. And also feuds or wars between the kingdoms themselves. If you pick invasion by Germanic tribes, that happened much earlier, 400s, 300s, and 400s. Okay, so let's go over um, the notes for today. So uh, today we're going to be focusing on feudalism, but also the manor system. Okay, so again, to summarize, this is Europe in the, this is Europe after after Rome, after the fall of Rome. So that, that is when feudalism develops. And Europe is being attacked from this side, from the north. And also these people are going to war against one another, right? So there's, coin, there, there's going to be uh, constant warfare. Constant warfare or feuds. Okay? And that's why feudalism is developed, to bring stability back to Europe, where everybody has a place in society. Okay, so at the very top is the king. The king gives some land to the nobles. So, um, so land, and in return, the nobles give their loyalty to the king. Okay, so the nobles will become vassals. Vassals of the king. Uh, and the king will become their lord. Okay, um... So a vassal is someone that, that gets land from someone and in return they have to swear their, their loyalty to, that, to, to their lord. So this person uh, will give land 
land, that person will become their lord. This person receives the land, they will become their vassal. Okay? Now, the, 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 the nobles could get some land. Let's say they get a piece of land. They could divide that land and give it to someone else. Now that noble becomes a lord himself or herself. Okay, so you could be a vassal and a lord at the same time. Um, here we have, uh, so, so land, and then this lord can give land to this guy. Okay, so now the knight is a vassal to this, this person, to this noble. Does that make, I hope that makes sense. Um, and then the, the knight would be, um, would, would farm the land, not farm the land, but the, the knight would create, um, like a small village called the manor where the peasants, where the peasants live. Uh, and the peasants don't own that land. They just live there. They kind of rent the land. And in return, the, the peasants are able to live in, in the manor. They're able to grow some, some, um, some food, and in return, this guy provides protection. Provides protection, okay? So this system is a system of relationships between the classes. At the very top is the king, right? This is the ruling class right here. This is the ruling class. And at the bottom are the peasants, okay? They all get something out of someone, but they have to be loyal to that person who... The, who's um who's giving them land or who's providing a service for them okay okay so what is feudalism at the top of the feudal system was the king el rey the king he ruled the land all the land but because it was so hard for him to maintain his grip on his vast empire he began dividing his his uh his land to the barons barons are nobles that's just a title of a, of a, of a noble so this is the king, this is the noble. The barons, the nobles, then divided up their land called fiefs between the lords. So a fief is a piece of land. Uh, the king gives a fief to a noble. A noble gives a fief to another noble or a peasant, not a peasant, to a knight. Okay, so the barons then divide up their land called fiefs between the lords. The lords were the rulers of the manor and controlled the village's surroundings. The manor was a center of town with a church, market, and homes. So we'll talk about what a manor is in a second. The peasants in the manor and its surrounding villages, uh, the majority of the population was peasant. Um, I wish I could insert a picture here, but I can't. So this is a, this is a knight. Um, this is a knight that was, that, um, that is trained as a knight from a very young age. And, um, and his son will probably become a knight as well. Right? These are hereditary, so that means that when you are born into a nobility, uh, your kids will be nobles. So if you're a peasant, your kids will also be peasants. Um, the social classes are very, very strict. So at the very top, you have the king, then you have the nobles, then you have the knights, and then you have the peasants. There is, there is no movement up or down. I guess there's movement down, but not up. So you can't say I'm a peasant and if I work hard, I'm going to be a noble one day. It doesn't work that way. There is no uh, way to do that. Okay. Um, for generations, people will be peasants. Like your great, great grandparents were peasants. This is a system that lasted hundreds of years. Okay. So we talked a little bit about what a, a manor is, right? So a manor is, it's like a big town and it's owned by the Lord. It can be a Lord, it can be a noble or it can be a knight. Um, the, one of the most important things is the, 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 the manor house, the, where the Lord lives, right? This is, this can be a big house, uh, like a manor house, or it can be a big castle. And that's where the Lord lives. Lord lives in the manor house. Uh, the manor also has, uh, homes for the peasants. It has grazing land for the animals. It, it most likely had some type, some type of church where the priest lived. The the Lord owns that land, but he allows the, the priest to, to, to be there. There's most likely a body of water uh, because obviously you need water to, uh, to grow your crops. Uh, most likely a mill, a mill where you can uh, 
ground your grains. Um, there was also um, like villages, like small villages where the peasants lived. Okay, there was there might be a pasture where the animals can go eat. There might be a forest where you can go and get wood, uh, get lumber and so forth. So this is a manor. A manor was the economic aspect of the feudal system, right? The majority of people in Europe at this time were peasants. And the peasants l worked this manor, okay? Uh, and in return for working the manor and providing taxes and providing food for the Lord, the Lord allowed them to stay in the manor, right? Uh, allowed them to stay in the manor and also provided protection. Because remember, um, it's very challenging to travel outside of the manor because there's it's, it's a dangerous time. And we'll talk about that in a minute. This is a modern uh, picture of, a, of what a manor manor looked like. They were all very different. Um, and this is where the Lord lived. So whenever there was an invasion, the people would try to get into these, uh, these, these large homes in, in the manor because they provided protection. Uh, the land that the vassal received was called a manor. It includes a manor house where the Lord lives, farmland for farming, and some peasants. Most were serfs. Uh, a serf is a peasant that can't leave the manor. It's kind of like a slave. Uh, you can leave if you ask for permission. Each manor was self-sufficient. This is a really important word. So self-sufficient means that you do, uh, you do not need outside help to survive. So the manor needs to be self-sufficient because you don't want to depend on anyone to be able to survive. So for example, you have your own animals, you have your own uh, farm, you have your own equipment, right? Uh, you try to limit access to the outside because um, you don't want to be dependent on people. And it's also dangerous to trade or to travel. Uh, so the manors, the, the people that live in the manor, they raise most of what they, they needed to live. They grew their own food. They raised farm animals for food and wool. They managed trees for fuel and lumber. So the manorialism, the manor system, is the economic aspect of the feudal system. The feudal system is the political, right, who's in charge. And manor is the economic, how people survive. I'm going to read this. Uh, follow along as best as you can. Feudalism and manorialism are two systems of thoughts that showed... Uh, some difference between them in terms of the concept of understanding. Uh, the manor system concentrated on, on the organization of agriculture or farming and craft products. On the other hand, feudalism describes the legal obligations of a vassal to noble. This is the main difference between the two, syst the, the, the two systems. Uh, both of these systems were in practice during the Middle Ages. They were the answer to, for numerous invasions. So this is the reason why it's, uh, the, the systems developed. Europe had experience during the Middle Ages. Feudalism and manorialism made sure that country was safe and sufficient. Uh, the country, so, or the, the continent. What is feudalism? Feudalism is a political system. Political means having to do with, um, with um, politics, having to do with who's in charge, um, it was based on the defense of the kingdom. During the Middle Ages, due to numerous invasions, invasions such as the Vikings and the uh, uh, Muslims, the kings were not very powerful. They could not defend the territory effectively. So, as a solution to this problem, kings, kings of the uh, as the owners of the land, divided these lands and gave them to nobles. Again, this land is called a fief. Nobles were the high class just below the monarchy or the kingdom. Once they gained the land, they distributed. The land among the vassals. So if a noble gets a big chunk of land, he could divide it up even more, right? Into other, uh, into other pieces. Uh, as a result of the land given to them, vassals pledged their loyalty to the nobles and the military support line in times of need. The state, the estates given to vassals, known as fiefs. Um, uh, let me see. We're gonna skip this one for now. So under feudalism, the king controlled all the land, but he needed loyalty to, uh, the loyalty of nobles to serve him. He needed nobles to provide armies. The king gained loyalty by giving them nobles land. Again, a fief. Shout out to um, Ernesto for emailing me on Friday. 
that one of the videos didn't work and I was able to figure it out. So good job, Ernesto. The nobles could then give land to other people and ask them for loyalty. Since warfare increased, armies were essential. Um, the king and nobles who gave land were called lords. So if you have a piece of land, let's say you have, you, let's say you have a, a, you're, a, you're a noble and you give a piece of land to someone below you, you automatically become their lord. The system of exchanging land for military service was called feudalism. It existed in Western Europe during the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages began with the fall of Rome and lasted for approximately a thousand years. It is important to remember that a central government did not exist in Western Europe after the fall of Rome. It is also important to remember that warfare between many kingdoms of Western Europe was frequent. It happened often. And that in time of war, armies are important. Okay, during the Middle Ages, most people lived in manors. This is the really important. So a manor is like a big village, right? Uh, a manor is like a big village that has different parts to it. A manor consisted of a lord's house. It could be a castle. And the peasants living around it. Each manor produced its own food, clothing, and shelter. Serfs gave their lord part of their harvest or part of the food, the food that they grew in return for the use of land and the other services they needed. In exchange, the lord protected the serfs from the outside invaders. Each lord had complete power over the serfs who lived on his manor. Serfs were bound to the land. They could not leave and had no voice in most manors. So very little, little rights. A manor was self-sufficient, again, self-sufficient, because the people who lived on it grew, raised, and made nearly everything that they needed. They rarely traded. They made their own clothing, cut their own wood, and raised all the food that they ate. So today we talked about the feudal system. So the king, noble, knights, and peasants. The king will give land to the noble. The noble will uh, pledge his loyalty to the king. The noble could give land to the knights. The knight will pledge loyalty to the, to the noble. And then the knight would develop a manor. Uh, or a noble can also develop his manor, right? So this is the political system. And the economic system is the manor. Where you have a home. You have little homes for the peasants. Uh, you, you have a church. Uh, you have uh, some farmland. You probably have some water. You have to have water. You have, uh, you might have like a small town as well. You have uh, land for the animals to graze. That's supposed to be grass. Um, yeah, your exit ticket is going to be pretty long today. You also, I'm also going to post a couple questions in classroom um, because some of us are just taking the exit ticket and not really thinking about this, and I want to guide you guys. Please do the best you can. Uh, again, you will have a quiz on uh, the fall after, after Europe after Rome and then the development of feudalism, and then we'll start our unit on the plague. I'll see you guys later. Bye.